So today is, is, is a very special day because really you get to come, you get to believe, you get to receive, you get to come and see Jesus as he comes to really cool parts of your own heart and begin uh, 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 really healing you and fixing you. Um, and that's so important. I love what Jared said yesterday. He said, hurting people hurt people, but healed people heal people. And I believe that there's going to be healing released into the Pacific Northwest because of the healing that you receive this morning. Let's just take a few seconds and have some fun with this. Let's celebrate the grace of Jesus Christ and what he's doing through Pastor Katie Cornell as she comes this morning. Come on. <laughs> God, stretch out your hands. We're going to bless her. Hey, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I thank you for this woman of God, this woman of power that you've anointed for this very hour. We receive her here. Lord, we thank you for the fullness of your glory, the fullness of your power, the fullness of your love and your peace to be operational within her. Lord, we thank you, Lord, the atmosphere is ready and Katie is locked and loaded. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We see our hearts are open, our mind is open, Lord, our posture is open. Lord, we receive what you have to say to our hearts. In Jesus' name, everyone said? All right, Katie, have fun. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so fired up for this city. Um, I, I can't not share this story, but um, uh, last weekend my husband and I were out um, for just a date night over out in Seattle, and, and our, our car got robbed while we were um, at dinner. And I'm literally like, we, we, me and my husband were like, we need, we, I'm like, we need to pray for Darren as our Seymour. The city really needs Jesus. But you know what's amazing to testify is we had about five Bibles in our car, and some of them are floating around Seattle right now. So someone's going to get saved because they robbed the wrong car. Car. And they took my bag, which had all my prophetic revelation in it. And I'm like, Lord, just get Seattle, like those Bibles, like just like move them around. So, you know, I just wanted to say though that seriously, like I this Seattle needs what you guys carry here in this house. And people that are from the peninsula, we joke about Seattle a lot, and we're like, but really we need to turn those jokes into prayers, you know. We're like, Jesus, and Jesus has come to Seattle and he lives inside of you. And that's why I'm so excited about this message that I carry because this is about salvation coming to our hearts and us bringing it to the city and bringing it to the world. But we have to know who we are first. We have to know what we carry and we have to get free. And sometimes our way to get free is to really become whole because Jesus came to cast out demons and to heal the sick. He brought a kingdom that he said was at hand. And when he, everywhere he went, people got free. They got whole. They got sozoed. Because it says in Isaiah 61 that he came not only to cast out and liberate us, but he came out to bind our broken hearts. And sometimes the things afflicting us are actually pulling on real brokenheartedness, real things that are hurting inside of us, then until we allow Jesus to minister to those things, those tormentors don't leave. And sometimes we're tormenting ourselves with those memories that keep coming over and over and over again, living in guilt and shame and condemnation, and we're trying to be an encounter to the world, but we aren't free. We're bound up in our own pain. And Jesus did not come and die for us to stay in pain. He did not come for us to die and to stay in sin. A lot of that pain and that heartache that we're carrying leads us to sin, and we're trying to get free from the sin and we're trying to cast out demons but the reality is, is until we allow Jesus to heal that hurting part in us then that, that that then we're not able to get free from the sin does that make sense so some of us have to actually like we, we want to deal with the symptoms we want to deal with the fruit the fruit is you know I, I'm, I'm I get angry the fruit is that I look at pornography the fruit is whatever it is right I cuss or this or that or anger comes out or or I get sad and depressed the fruit is the anxiety and but inside our heart is is a root that Jesus actually died to pay to uproot that root so you could be made whole and be free in Jesus name but a lot of times we want to just keep focusing on 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 the exterior part, either making ourselves like look good, right, or pretending, or 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 we want to focus on like just getting rid of like um, like behavioral modification. And the reality is, is that Jesus came to enter into your brokenness to heal your heart. Isn't that good news? And doesn't our world need that? Because right now our world doesn't know who it is. People are confused more than ever. They're confused. 
And so I want to share my story because I got delivered from a spirit of anxiety, and I'm going to kind of just use my story as an illustration because Jesus is here in this room right now, and he's going to heal your hearts today. He's going to, he's going to start ministering to you right now while I'm preaching. So while I'm ministering, while I'm preaching, if Jesus brings something up, go with him on that journey. Don't, I won't be offended that you checked out of my sermon, okay? Just go with Jesus and allow him to heal you. But I'm going to share my story because my story will connect to your guys' story. But I was a Christian, loved the Lord, but was still bound up in a lot of self-doubt and a lot of different things and I struggled with anxiety and I had infirmity. I had um, a bladder problem and that, that affected my intimacy with my husband. I was like, you know, here I am trying to like I, I was not living in the fullness of the kingdom of God. Like, I, you know, I had went to every urologist that existed, all these different things. And our story is that our friend Romeo came from Burkina, and he came and was like, you, get rid, you want me to get rid of that for you? And I was like, what? Like, I, I've prayed for healing and everything. Like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, yeah, spirit, come out in Jesus' name. And my bladder affliction that I had had for four years was gone in Jesus' name. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Yes, we like that. And that was our introduction into deliverance. I'm like, deliverance is the best. Like, does that work for everything? You know, and I'm like, yes. So a couple days later, after people keep coming to our house for freedom, I'm like, I didn't realize, I, I didn't know that infirmity could be a spirit. And so I learned that. Well, I didn't know that my anxiety was a spirit. So then I'm like, oh, my God, now I can get free from anxiety. This is amazing. And so I'm like, Romeo, pray for me. And he prays for me. And he's like, hmm, Yeah. You need to go sit with the Lord. I was like, no, just, just get it to go. <laughs> like, just go. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to live with anxiety anymore. He's like, no, I feel like you need to sit with the Lord and ask him what lie you're believing that allowed this in. And I was like, this was my first introduction to inner healing. I didn't know what the word was, didn't understand. But he just like prophetically, he was like, I see something. You need to go sit with the Lord. And I was like, dang it. I just want the instant, you know, like instant fix. But I went and sat with the Lord. It took me about three days. I was pressing into the Lord, pressing into the Lord, like, Lord, I don't, what, when did this came in? And he brought me back to a memory when I was 16 years old and I had my first anxiety attack. Now, I hadn't thought about that memory in so long. I had just been so used to my anxiety that I didn't, I didn't even think about when and how it started. You know, I like, didn't ever even cross my mind to think about that. Now, again, I'm a Christian. I love, the, I read the word of God. I'm, you know, all this stuff, but I'm like, just have this friend, anxiety, that's not my real friend. Well, anyways, so the Lord brings me back to this memory of when I had my first anxiety attack. And so I'm like, okay, all right, what do you want me to do with that, Lord? Like, I don't understand. Like, I remember. And he just started leading me through what now I would call the ministry of inner healing, which is what Jesus does, because he says he binds up our broken hearts. But he, he says, why, why are you of anxiety? Why were you anxious? And I was like, well, I was doing my stuff of school and I, and I got, I was afraid that I was going to fail. Fear of failure. That was the root of my anxiety, was a belief and a lie that I came into agreement with that I could fail. Fail God, fail my Heavenly Father, that there was a place for failure. And out of that place, it opened a door to, to the spirit of anxiety that would torment me. And so then I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. And so then I had to come into the truth. What's the truth? The truth is that I can never fail God. He loved me and died for me when I was yet still in sin. So now here I am saved. I'm not perfect, right? I'm trying, like, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't feel like I'm perfect, but yet I know that if he loved me before, he loves me perfectly now, and that there's nothing I can do to separate me from the love of God, right? So I'm like, okay, like, that's the truth, but, I, but I've been believing this lie that I can fail God. And so out of this place, I would just get anxious all the time, anxious. And of course, then there's that spirit that kind of would exemplify it. And so literally, I went back to Romeo, and I'm like, Romeo, pray for me now. <laughs> like, I know. I don't know that I can't fail God. And so he prayed for me and I got delivered from anxiety. Isn't that amazing? Now, this was, this was before we, we didn't know, no one taught us anything, but that was my first encounter with inner healing. Now, when I tell Tom, my husband, about this, he's like, that's what God did with me for four months on the floor on the ground. He's like, God would bring up memories 
and he would begin speaking truth and breaking and knocking down walls. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm like, that's amazing. That didn't happen for me like that. You know, and I feel like that's some people's story. Some people, God just sovereignly starts doing amazing stuff in the glory of God and in worship. And other people, it doesn't happen that way. I don't really fully understand that, but the reality is, is that's the church's job. Some people are sovereignly delivered. Some people it takes come out in Jesus' name. But it's our job to help administer what God paid for on the cross to people and to fight for what he paid for. For some of, some of us actually are going to have to fight for what he promised. It may not have happened sovereignly during worship and during on the ground, but we can actually go to him and say, Father God, I, I, I need that. I need to be made whole. I need to know who I am because these things in my life are not for me. They're not for me and I don't want them anymore and I refuse to live like this anymore. I refuse. I, I'm like, I love my, Sarah, my good friend, she's like the other day, something was going on, she's like, I'm calling a fast, that's it. I refuse, I'm gonna fast until this is better. And I'm like, that's the, that's the violent take it by force. Like we have to go, you know what, until this is gone, hope that was okay. But, like, but I'm like, I just love that. Like I was like, that, is, that made me so excited because that's the attitude we need to have. Did you know that it's not okay for you to believe anything about yourself that Jesus wouldn't say about you? Anything. Any of those thoughts that are contrary to what Jesus says about you are lies, and they need to be torn down in your mind and in your heart. And in that place, Jesus will deliver you and heal you. But we're going to have to actually acknowledge and be real and honest with those things that are in our, in our hearts. We have, to, we have to actually be self-aware and ask Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm not seeing the freedom that I want to see in my life. I don't feel loved. Or I don't know. Like, people talk about intimacy with the Lord, and I'm not feeling that. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you see in the scriptures or you see in other people's lives that you don't feel like lines up with your life, it starts with a posture of humility and honesty before the Lord where we say, I don't know, but I'm going to have to be okay with the fact that I'm not okay right now. I'm going to have to be okay with the fact that there must be something that Jesus wants to fix so I can have what he promised for me. So, so that the first part of allowing Jesus to really heal our hearts is to, is to admit that, wow, I'm believing a lie because Jesus didn't say that about me. He says I'm perfect. He says I'm amazing. He says that I can live without sin. He says I can be not mindful of the sinful conscience. How many of us are like, it says that, but I don't know that I feel that, <laughs> right? How many, there's things in here that are for us and for you today, promises of God that are for your present reality, that he wants to bring God's kingdom to you right now. But we're going to have to acknowledge the fact that there's things that aren't like that so that we can bring them up to him and he can heal them. Amen? So there's two different types of like, the spectrums of this. Sometimes we have people, um, of course, we would never do this. You know, this is, this is for your friend or for your, your partner. But some people like to fester in things, right? Things come up and you can just like sit in it, sit in it, sulk in it, self-pity in it, complain about it. You can blame, you can get angry, right? You can like, I mean, there's a lot you can do in our stuff and in our ick, okay? That's not a good place to be. Can we all agree with that? None of us like that. Sometimes because we don't want that, we like to go to the other side of it, which is suppress things so we never deal with the reality of them. Because we're like, if we pull it up, it's yucky and I can't get out of it, so I'm going to stuff it deep down and pretend like it never happened. Now, <laughs> how many of you have done that? <laughs> well, in that, though, how many of you guys know that life happens and sometimes this stuff that we try to pretend isn't there comes up when we don't want it to? It, it, never, it actually doesn't go away when we do that. It doesn't go away when we suppress it, and it doesn't go away when we sit in it either. Because what we're supposed to do is bring it to Jesus. We're supposed to allow him to heal and minister to us. And when we do that, he will bring us truth and the rhema word of God to break down those lies that we, that we believe, um, that, that we know and hear, but we don't know here. When we hear the, the word of the Lord in our heart, like when we hear him speak to us, it has a way to break down those walls and break down those lies and heal something supernaturally in your heart the way that he can remove cancer. He can remove those things in your heart. It's like it's supernatural. It just happens. You might not even see or know or like just like with miracles, you may not even see nothing happen. 
And all of a sudden, people the next day, they're like, my knee's healed. And you're like, no, I didn't see anything. You know what I mean? It's the same with our hearts. It's a supernatural thing because it's a promise of him that he would heal your heart. And when we come to him in faith for him to heal our heart, he is faithful to do it every single time. It's not overcomplicated. There's not a special method. It's literally just trusting and knowing that he loves you and that he has your heart. And if you give it to him, he will heal your heart. Amen. Isn't that, that's, that's the good news of the gospel. And this world needs us to be whole so we can administer from wholeness. Because when we are going out and helping this broken world in our own, in our own hurt and our own stuff, that's why people will talk about Christians being two-faced or things like that. Or the hypocrisy or the things like that. It's because, it's because we're, we're, we're suppressing these things and they're coming up in ungodly ways later when we don't want them to. But we really want to flow in what Jesus promises is. And so some of us have to go, okay, Jesus, I am going to trust you and allow you to minister to my heart. You can trust Jesus with your heart, your whole heart. We talk about that when we say the salvation prayer, that you like, give your heart to Jesus, right? But we actually have to give our hearts to Jesus. Did you know that that, that stuff that people did to you when you were a kid or the things that people spoke to you was not Jesus? That is not who Jesus is. Jesus is a good Savior. God is a good God, and Holy Spirit's a good comforter. And those things that were done to us Jesus is not okay with. He paid a price for those things not to happen. And he actually wants to undo and heal you from those traumas. He doesn't want you to pretend like they didn't happen. He loves you and cares about you and wants to see you made whole. He doesn't pretend like they didn't happen. He sees them. And some of us just, I just feel like there's people in this room right now that need to know that God is a just God. Justice belongs to him. It is in the Lord. Like, it is, it is his. And on judgment day, there will be justice for the things that have been done. But on this earth, that's not our place. We have to forgive people and allow Jesus to heal our hearts so we can be made whole and we can go help hurting people. And trust God to take care of the rest. He knows. He knows what was done to those people that hurt you, that caused them to hurt you. He loves them too. And he's got them in his hand. And he wants, you to trust, he wants you to trust him with them because he loves them and they're his children too. That's for someone in here. God is the God of justice. He will have justice. But on this side of earth, he loves you. He loves you and he wants to heal your hearts. He wants to heal your hearts. And so what I want to do is I'm going to show you, Jesus, Jesus has actually been doing this. Some of you already know and have experienced this as I'm talking. You're like, yeah, I feel like he's done that for me. Okay, so, but, but a lot of times Jesus will bring up a memory. Now, sometimes the enemy will do this too, um, but, or, our, or our hearts will bring up things that we just kind of like cycle in, right? Like, oh, no, 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 no. And that can feel like it's the enemy. The reality is, is I've gotten to a place with the Lord that if the enemy tries to bring up something, I'm like, oh, thank you. Because now I know what to do with it. I'm going to go give it to Jesus. You can't bring up my old sin because that means I just get to repent for it. You can't bring up a wound that and to torment me anymore because now I know Jesus is good and he's going to heal it. So what the enemy uses for evil, just use it for good. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, man, yeah, that, that wound came up again. And, and, and I'm reminded of that pain. But good news is I don't need to let it hurt me anymore. I'm going to come to Jesus with it and he's going to heal me. And it's amazing. And so you don't have to ever be in that place of like that just vicious cycle and Anymore. You just, you go, oh my goodness. And so Jesus, when you, when you spend time with him, he's reminding you of things. Now he's not reminding them you of them for condemnation. That's what a lot of times I think we get stuck in a place of like, we just, like the, there's a spirit there lying to us that just keeps us to remember these things and make us feel bad for them. No, 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 that is not the Lord. The Lord brings things up so that then he can heal them. So when those memories come up of a past trauma or past abuse or a past sin or things like that or things that we did that we regret, is what we do is we say, oh, wow, I do remember that. Yes, Jesus, I, I do remember that. Why are you showing me this? And I actually want to encourage you to do something really powerful when he invites you. And he's going to do this, and we're going to do this in a moment. We're, uh, Sarah's going to do an activation, whatever the Lord leads her to do. But is that... I want you to actually go back to that memory with Jesus. And you go back there with Jesus. And you invite him into that. And you ask him, what is the lie that you're believing in that wound? 
So for me at 16, it was the fear of failure that perpetuated the anxiety. For some of us, it could be a variety of different things. I'm always alone. I'm rejected. No one loves me. I'm dirty. I'm confused. Ask your heart, what is it that this younger self of you is feeling? And allow Jesus to administer the truth. And then you give him that trauma or those emotions or those lies. And watch him exchange them for the joy and the peace that you've been desiring and wanting. Jesus heals broken hearts. He will heal your heart if you allow him in. And so this is an invitation that I'm releasing to you for your time with the Lord from now until, you return, until Jesus returns or heaven. Is when you, you know, we spend a lot of time reading our Bibles and doing different things, but I would love for you to make set aside time with the Lord to invite him into your heart and say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to heal in me today? What lie am I believing that's holding me back from my destiny? Invite him in to evaluate your heart. Because we don't always know. We're just kind of okay and comfortable with where we're at at times. And the reality is, is that if we, we know, I don't look like Jesus yet. My life isn't flowing like Jesus yet. I'm not seeing the power of Jesus yet. And we, but we don't know. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. And so when you just feel like you're stuck or you feel like you can't get free from something or you feel like just whatever it is, you feel like I'm not on fire for the Lord, ask Holy Spirit to show you. Because he is the preparer. He's the one preparing us to, for, to be for our bride. And he will do what the word of God says he will do. He will prepare you. He will purify you. He will reveal the truths that you need to know to be free. He will. He's faithful and just and he loves you. So I, I, I'm excited for what's about to happen because I believe that Jesus is in the room right now. And he wants to encounter you now. Is that good? Yeah. So I'm going to invite Sarah up. And she's going to lead you guys through an activation. And then we're going to do some ministry after that. Hey, guys. My name's Sarah. Thanks so much for having me today. It's an honor to do this with you. If you don't know who I am, um, my husband Ben and I, we came here, I think it was end of January. I can't even remember when we were last here. It all feels like a blur. The last few months feel like two weeks to me. Um, <laughs> but where the worship pastor is at Sozo, um, and we love inner healing. Uh, before we moved to Sozo, we did our three years at Bethel School, and we're under this incredible mentor there who was like, we called her the queen of vulnerability. That's kind of her reputation. Basically, she gets up and tells her life testimony, and everyone gets cracked open. She doesn't even really say anything. And then people get up and start sharing their darkest, deepest things that they've never told anyone. And then the trauma just comes to the surface and she's able to release protectors and get that heal with the Lord. Um, so I was just kind of thrown in and given these like students to mentor and was like, yep, figure it out kind of thing. <laughs> and I, the Holy Spirit was really good and he backed me up and I feel like he's given me some beautiful tools. The thing that I love about any healing though is it's never a formula. Um, the Holy Spirit's so creative. It's my favorite because I feel like I just get to go on a journey with him with people and just see Jesus bring so much radical freedom to people's hearts. Um, and I really felt to say that Jesus loves you so much. He has so much compassion for you. Everything you've walked through, he only feels love towards you. He never feels condemnation for you. He never even feels condemnation towards your sin. And when you sin out of pain, he has so much understanding for it. His heart isn't for you to be bound in sin, but he sees you and he sees everything you've walked through. And if you have destructive patterns of sin in your life, he sees the root and he has compassion for it. He doesn't look at you and think, oh, so stupid. Why can't you just break out of that? It says he has more thoughts towards you than grains of sand on the shore and they're all good. So today I just want to lead you into an encounter with him where you can just get a glimpse of his heart towards you. And then the rest of your life you just keep, to, keep getting to discover him more and more and his love for you. And that's why I love him and I love inner healing because it leads you to an encounter with the compassion of Jesus. So I want you guys to just close your eyes. 
Hmm. And I want you to ask God to show you what your heart looks like. Is it tired? Is it hurting? Does it feel neglected? When was the last time you actually asked your heart how it feels? Mm. Emotions are a beautiful thing. God gave them to you. It's okay to feel. And I just tell your heart that it's safe right now with me and it's safe with the Lord to feel and be held. And I want you to ask God to show you if there are any walls around your heart that are protecting you from receiving the the love of God. If you feel or you can see that there's a wall around your heart, maybe there's several walls, I want you to just ask God to show you what one of those walls is. Hmm. Maybe it's fear or shame. Anything really that takes you from the peace of God and knowing you're fully loved. Hmm. And if he feels like, if he feel like he's shown you that, then I want you to ask him to take you to a memory of when that wall was put up around your heart. Now I want you to go to that version of you in that memory and I want you to just ask them how they feel right now. You're not there to fix them, you just want to know how they feel. And then I just want you to love on them. Tell them how much they're worth. Tell them that you're sorry that they went through that experience, that you're here for them, that you see them, that what they feel is important to you. It's really important that we can acknowledge our pain so that we can make an exchange with Jesus. So I just ask God that you give people a grace right now to connect with their hearts and connect with that wound. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And then I want you to ask that version of yourself, what lie they're believing from that experience they've been through. Mm. 
And now the Lord's going to come in and he's going to stand with you guys. And as he's there, I want you to ask that younger version of yourself, can you go be with Jesus now? And if that younger version says yes, that's beautiful. If they say no, I want you to pull them in close. I want you to hug them. And then I want you to invite Jesus to come and hug either you or you and that younger version of yourself. And then I want you to ask the Lord, what do you want me to know right now? What do you want to say to me? And then once you've heard that truth, I want you to invite that younger version of yourself to just go be with Jesus. And it's just going to be you and Jesus together and he's still holding you. And now he wants to take you to that wall that you first saw that was around your heart. Mm. Mm. And I want you in your own heart just to break agreement with that wall with the truth that Jesus spoke to you. So maybe the wall is fear and Jesus said that the lie you were believing was you weren't enough, but then he told you that you've always been enough for him. So I want you to say, fear, I don't want you anymore. Jesus says I'm enough. I don't need to be afraid of being enough for him. And then I want you to picture Jesus taking that wall away in whatever way that looks like. And then he's going to walk you to the other side of the wall. And he's going to walk you into something new. And there's going to be a new setting for you to look at. A new reality. Or maybe he'll give you a promise. He'll tell you a promise of what life can look like now that you don't have that agreement that he's taken that wound from you. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. If you're still staying where you need to be, but if you're done. Mm. Can you just wave your hand if you are done? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. One of the things that's really important for all of you to know, and I feel like this is for a few 
people, but I'm just going to say it to everybody, is Jesus is okay with you, your emotions and your questions and your stuff. Now, he, I think a lot of us want to hide our pain from Jesus or hide our stuff from him, but he's actually the only safe person to share it with. And it's so good to allow him into that, those places. And he loves us so much. So he doesn't, it's this weird combination of knowing that he's not, it's not manipulation. He's not asking us to do it to fix us. He just loves us and wants to make us whole. So it's, it's not because he wants something from you. He just wants you and he wants you to be whole in him. And he wants you to know his peace. And so I just want to encourage you to be with the Lord and to give him your stuff. Show him your pain. Show him your questions or your anger at him or for what happened. And I promise you, he will answer you and show up and heal you. He is the safe place to do that. Anything else we turn to will not satisfy but he's the one that we bring that to. And so I really want you guys to feel free to know that. This is the start of a journey for you guys. Some of you are well into this journey, and some of you, this is the first time you've ever encountered the Lord like this. But he wants to continue to minister to you each and every day. When things get triggered, you know, a lot of times we just like to go, oh, let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> I did not just yell at my kids like that or whatever it is. No, you go back to the Lord when you have a, a moment. Lord, where did that come from? Because that was not you, and that fruit was not the Holy Spirit. And so then you ask him to minister to you until you can break those lies and those agreements and find freedom and deliverance and wholeness. And you'll find that you have more and more and more and more peace all the time and less and less and less triggers until everywhere we go the kingdom of God is exuberating from us because it is us we've allowed it to take over every part of our life not just here but here and we just can't help but then see people's hurt and bring Jesus to it because we know there's hope for them. The same way we know there's hope for their sickness or for their deliverance. We'll now know that that hurtingness in them when they tell you about the loss of someone really close to them. It's like you, you don't do this. It's really sensitive. You don't do this. But you never know, ever seen when you start realizing that God heals and you see someone who's sick and you get excited. You know, and you're like, oh, don't act so excited. That, you know, but you're just excited that Jesus is going to heal them. The same thing will start happening as people are sharing their stories with you. Is there's going to be this excitement that rises up that that is so I'm so sorry that happened to you, but good news, Jesus will heal that. He will heal that, and he'll heal that, and he'll heal you, and he'll heal all of you, and there isn't any situation that was too difficult for him to heal. He died for all hurting people, for them to be made whole and delivered and receive all that salvation paid for so that until the whole world looks like heaven. Amen? <laughs> Starting inside your heart. And so, yeah, I just want to invite the ministry team up. If you are here today and you are in need of a miracle, that's one thing I wanted to share as well is that, did you know that these emotional things can produce physical sickness? So sometimes we're waiting for our miracle. I've seen deaf ears open up through inner healing. I've seen blind eyes healed through inner healing. Kid you not, because in, in our, we, we forget in our kind of naturalistic world that our emotions and all of our bodies are all actually intertwined. And that's why they say depression hurts. Like, 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 mental, like when we have mental struggles, it can produce physical problems, right? It's the same with this emotional trauma. And so some of us have been praying for healing breakthrough or deliverance from different things, and those things will come as we allow Jesus to heal our hearts. Because where there is wholeness, there is no sickness. There just isn't. And so a lot of times I just want to encourage you that sometimes we kind of keep going after um, healing, and God wants to really heal our hearts, and in, the, in, in that we actually are healed. It's amazing. So I just wanted to share that because that's powerful. So yes, if you need healing in your body or deliverance or just you felt like what we did today, you did not get, you didn't 
to have breakthrough, want to talk to someone about it, come forward and we will help you encounter the living Jesus because he's here. So I'll give this back over to Darren. Yeah. <laughs> or to Sandy. <laughs> change, change. I just want to leave you real quickly with um, those of you maybe that aren't going to, you know, come up for prayer. I just felt this was in the room this morning. We were singing that song, They That Wait Upon the Lord Shall Renew Their Strength. That actually is, has been a prophetic word to this house for a few years. And I just, it's Isaiah chapter 40, verse, I'm reading from the Amplified. Um, verse 31 says this, but those who wait for the Lord who expect, who look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. <clears throat> they shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as the eagles mount up to the sun. And they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint or become tired. What we have the, here this morning, what Katie has presented, as you wait, that word wait is kava in the Hebrew. And it means to entangle, like um, wicker, if you get that picture of wicker. This is, and then Darren started, you know, the, the, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Yes and amen. So this is a promise of God. The other thing, too, is that the, there is a, a lie that many times keeps us from even going here is the fact that we're separated from God. And I just curse that today in anybody in the name of Jesus. There is no separation. We are not separated. There is no separation. God, the Holy Spirit is in you. God is with you. There's, there is no separation. So you can wait. You can allow yourself. You can see. You can allow your imagination to entangle with Jesus this morning, or even as you're going home, or tonight, or in your meditation times. It's a beautiful practice. Um, <clears throat> it's the Word of God, and it's a beautiful practice even in your meditation to see yourself just, just entangled with Jesus, like, you know, like the wicker would be, or like this. There's no, and where you can't really tell where one starts and the other ends, because that's the truth. And in that, it will be strength for you. In that, will be healing for you. In that, will be the ability many, many times to say, um, you know, I used to, I think Darren said this too, but I used to, years ago, I used to say, you know, we don't want to get into ingronious eyeballitis, you know, ingrown eyeballs. However, we do want to hear the Lord and what it is the Lord is putting his finger on. So we don't go digging for things, but we're in a season. This is a season of deliverance for us. This is a season for healing for us. And as you wait upon the Lord, as you entangle with Jesus, the promise is that you will renew your strength, that you will mount up like wings of eagle. You'll walk and not be weary. You'll run and not faint. And there'll be, there'll be um, as we yield ourselves to that spirit of preparation for what's coming that spirit of adoption really is a the spirit of preparation um we'll find that freedom that you know katie was talking about so um so we just invite the ministry team up um you want to come up now and and if you are wanting any kind of ministry we have a group of people that will pray for you otherwise we bless you in jesus name we have a service tonight at six o'clock and Pastor Tom will be back while I worship. So, amen. Bless you guys.